Hello and welcome back to our channel. In this video, I will introduce you a new tool that you can easily introduce in your CFD simulation workflow. It doesn't matter if you're using OpenFun or any other tool. Uh, so the tool is Enova and Enova CFD for OpenFun. So let's see <clears throat> what is this tool. So basically Enova is a pre-processing tool for CFD with automatic meshing capabilities. So later we're going to do some tutorials, some cases just to show you, but that is a big war when you mention automatic now because in reality having something full automatic is quite tricky, quite difficult, it's not impossible. So let's see how we can deal without an automatic workflow for meshing in, in Enova. But also we have Enova CFD, which pretty much is the same technology as Enova, but now we have a GUI for setting cases in open from pre and post processing so it can make your workflow much easier okay so enova is developed by enova cfd technology so here you have link so you can visit their site and also i that in japan uh important that <clears throat> It's fully parametric, it can you now perform all your pre-processing tasks that you commonly do when you can do CFD kind of simulations and stuff like repairing the geometry but also doing the meshing and to some extension also you can do some post-processing and setting cases if you're using open phone. and very important it runs in parallel and it can be deployed in the cloud okay so it's not a single processor tool that doing a mesh will take a long time here you depend on your resources you can get very large meshes in relative affordable times so just to mention that idea one billion mesh a couple of weeks ago and it took a long time you know all the <clears throat> input output but i managed to do it with 128 processes with no problem so now <clears throat> that introduces the tool also the workflow the workflow is the common workflow that we we follow with any tool so we have the geometry import okay so remember and this is very important in the next videos that we're going to work we're going to talk a, a lot about geometry because whatever you you do you get in your mesh everything depends in your geometry so it's not putting any geometry or any file form i know so many people working with open form maybe they are used to that dreaded stl format i don't recommend it so if you have access to a good tool it's better to get a good format what is a good format what is the best format we're going to talk about that so you get your geometry you have many <clears throat> You, uh, Enova supports many formats then after you get the geometry you have also the capability to repair that geometry in Enova so most of the time you can do a small fix in Enova sometimes you need to go back to your CAD tool but let's say that it's not that big you can do it in Enova we're going to work it out but also if you have very large assemblies or dirty geometries okay something that we can call fault tolerant you no know, meshing you can do that in Enova no it's a surface wrapper and you get this fault tolerant meshing so you are going to do a lot of the featuring but you are going to save the time that you need or that you need to invest in cleaning that geometry after you get that you repair or you do your surface wrapper you can do the automatic mesh mesh so there are many methods implemented in Enova. we're going to go through those methods and we're going to play around with a little bit there or the actions but what is important you're going to see that just by setting a few options we can get good quality meshes and after you have that you can export your mesh okay to any of the <clears throat> CFD solver, so I know what supports most of the uh, common <coughs> CFD vendors. So just to mention a few, you have a Star CCM, Fluent, and also <coughs> and also CFD plus 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 on other generic for format like CGNS, and of course Open Fun format. So that is the generic workflow, but also you can go and enter into the open fun specific so after you do everything we can enter into this loop for open fun specific and here we have in our gui also we have some extra options where we can set up the case export everything and then run the case the simulation and everything can work in windows or linux with no problem and also we have access to uh post processing so we're going to work on that in a few <clears throat> tutorials so talking about geometry import is very robust you have support to many formats just to mention here i put a few formats so as you can see most of the common format that you have in any cat tool or solid modeling tool you have access here so there is a lot of people working with rhino 3d and i have a big fan also blender or stl so you have 
access to that and Astran and then the most common ones like Stead, IGES, Asus, Paris Solid and then as you use commercial software you have a Space Clean, Pro E, Solid Edge, Solid Wars and even Katia. Okay, so there are many options so you just need to import it and then you can do your automatic mesh and talking about the capabilities that you have to repair the geometry so as soon as you import that one usually as I mentioned it's very important to have good quality meshes but if it happens that you have an error or something that you don't like in the geometry it can be fixed so the most common sense that you can do when fixing the geometry probably merging faces or erasing some edges because when you have topology based meshes it will the mesh the surface mesh will have the tendency to follow all those small features so you can merge arrays and so on so we're going to work on that later after that after you <coughs> read and also if you need your repair you can do your mesh and so the meshing here in Innova the technology okay the most robust one it is it goes from the surface to the volume okay something that we can call it bottom to top bottom out so basically this topology based mesh is a tetra polyhedral mesh okay so you can generate tetra meshes or poly polyhedral mesh so the poly is constructed from a tetra and just to mention that basically any shape can be decomposed into into a, a polyhedra so even the excess is you have tetra you can decompose and construct it from there so one of the big advantage of this polyhedra that it will reduce your cell count but also it will solve very well the surface it would follow very well the surface, but also it have a good a property from a numerical point of view because it tends to resolve better the gradient. So this is the stuff that we're going to work in a few cases, but this is a matter of probably choosing a cell type. Okay, so you know that you have the tetra, you know that you have the excess that also we have here in Inova, and you have the poly. So it's a matter, of, like I say, a religion. So you pick up one. I really enjoy polyhedra but also you need to use the right element for the right case so not always a poly will be a good cell type not always a tetra or not always an exa okay so this is things that we can work so it can generate good quality meshes okay very good quality meshes that i have to say and also we have the prismatic layers that is almost uh error free okay so you just need to define and you can grow perfect prismatic layers even in the most complex geometries and important to mention now talking about now these poly cells that they can reduce your final cell count by a factor of up to six okay so imagine that you have a tetra with 10 uh, 10 million cells and then as you convert that tetra to a poly that can become something about 1.5 1 1.6 1 keeping the same definition features of the surface then there is another method, the string wrap method, that this is the one we call the, the fault tolerant. I like to call it that fault tolerant. So this is in the case that you have dirty geometries. Okay, so the previous one, you have a beautiful clean geometry. This is what we want. In this case, you get a dirty geometry usually those nasty STL files and you don't want to spend any time trying to fix that one so what we do here is that you get your your geometry you string drag the geometry so you just cover all the surface using a surface mesh that <clears throat> it grows according to some parameters now it covers the surface and then after that you apply a remesh algorithm this remesh is going to smooth everything that has been covered here and after you have this uh, remesh this surface good quality surface mesh you can go and use a tetra or poly mesh okay you can grow your tetra your poly and also you can put your prismatic layer so this string wrap is something like you start with the string wrap you import your geometry dirty geometry you use it then remesh and then you go tetra or poly important to mention that you use this in dirty geometries you have a clean watertight geometry it makes no sense to use this one but you can use it there is no problem okay so other features that you have in Enova, you have macros okay so this is part of the automation you can put Enova in optimization loop everything can be run now from the terminal and you can create your scripts it has as i mentioned a user-friendly gui to te uh, to set up cases in open phone we're going to work a lot on that and it can be run in windows and linux okay in windows it's run using the w windows subsistent linux okay but also can can run in serial parallel or on the cloud okay so there is a nice feature a nice button and you can that can you can deploy everything <clears throat> 
on the cloud in your favorite provider. So let's say Amazon or whatever you use. And general purpose measures, that is you can output measures in the most common format. So as I mentioned, you have ISEN CFD, CGNS, Star CCN, ANSYS Fluent, CFD++, Open Phone, and so on. Okay, so we see now about what you get and just to end here. So very important to mention that you get the most advanced mesh generation tool available that is brought to you, brought to you by the same team that they created ICE and CFD. Okay, so it's not a new tool. It's a tool that has been around for a really long time. And just to mention that the same people that de developed this tool, ICE and CFD, which is a fantastic tool, they developed this new tool. Okay, so this is not nothing new, so nothing that uh, a whole bunch of guys just <clears throat> get an office computer and start to develop. It's just well time tested technology. You have also world class CAD import technology based in this library, in the Hoops and Trans library, and will give you access to many formats. Also, an easy GUI to set up your open phone cases, also for post-processing. All the post-processing is based in BTK, it's the same technology, you know, that drive Paraview. And, well, using Innova, you need to get in very expensive licenses. You just get the mesh and technology, and then you can just connect to your tools, talking about open phone. Okay, so you will be only limited by the number of course that you have available. So here you can visit the Innova website to get more information, to know everything in the tutorial, and you can also get there a demo version, or you can con contact directly, directly also, and we can put it in contact now <clears throat> and give you a demonstration license. So with this brief introduction, now let me introduce you Innova, a little bit the graphical user interface okay so let me skip here the presentation so the first thing is that we need to work now okay so this is a classical case that probably you're familiar now the mix enable so this is what we're going to do so we have this is case is a clean geometry but later we're going to work and we're going to export it now as an stl we're going to put some holes there just to see how how things can be can be fixed so in this case, let's say that it's a perfect geometry, you export it, you save it, and then you, when you launch and all, but you get this nice graphical interface and just open your geometry. In this case, I have everything here. I will just open this step format, probably, I think, in my opinion, it's the best one. But in any case, we're going to work on that. But look at that, you have access to all these different formats there, okay? So you open, and then when you explore your GUI, okay, so it's a traditional GUI, here you're going to have the option. So geometry, so all the repair, you do it here and different operations. Then when you, it comes to meshing, you have all the options here. And here you have the different types of meshes that you can generate. And when it comes to open phone, you can set up everything there. And then also you have some post process. So let's address a little bit geometry. Here we have the tree. Okay, in this case, it imported the geometry and automatically created a volume. When you have a volume here, it means that you have a water type geometry this is what we want some cases it might happen that you have this volume and just to show you let me go okay let me go here okay let me report and it's creating automatically but if i flatten this one see that i don't have a volume so to go into the machine stage, you need to have that volume that is telling you that this is watertight there are no holes okay so to create the volume just can click there in the case that it wasn't created automatically you can have multiple volumes by the way okay so later we go into more compl uh, complicated cases so you have this one and just to mention that you have access to everything that you have in your geometry even in stl5 so see that you go here you click and you can access all the faces and this is important remember that you can define some local refinement you can impose boundary conditions so just those name it selection so if i right click here move to group let me call this one inlet and now let me go here let me call it call this one outlet and it doesn't matter your target solver you always work like this you need to create those name it selections and so on and then when you move to your target solver you are going to choose you now the specific boundary conditions and so on. Also, you can select everything that you have in your geometry. So see that you have edges and you go here, right click, and you can define parameters there. 
okay, local sizing and so on. Okay, so those that is a little bit more advanced. Later we talk about all those actions. See that you have points and so on. So let's say that you are happy with this definition. Nothing else to do. Just to point out that you have many options here that we are going to visit later. And when it comes to meshing, saying you have many options, you can manipulate your mesh and so on. Also, you can convert your mesh to an STL here you have this can be sometimes very helpful and you can manipulate STL files here by the way your STL geometries you can move no close holes and so on that can be very helpful if you are working with a specific STLs so in this case let's generate the mesh so remember we're going to use a method the the best method is the one that grows from the surface to the volume okay so the options you have here so if you have worked with Eisen CFD, remember that the developers are the same from Eisen CFD, it would be very familiar the graphical interface. Okay, so see that here we access the global controls, local controls, and the list of local control. Okay, so when it comes to meshing, basically what you need to define is just these parameters maximum size, minimum size, and this is the curvature definition. Okay, so basically, just to give you an example, if you put 36, it means that you're going to put in a circumference 36 elements. So an element every 10 degrees. So it's up to you. So usually I like to use 16 there and you know your geometry. Okay, so I would put here 0 0.1 maximum size and 0 0.01 to define the minimum size. Also, you have control over gaps and so on, but this is the most important. Okay, so that being said, you can go and do your mesh. Important here, topological mesh, topological mesh parameters. Okay, so you can choose what you want to do. Okay, so you can do everything automatically and then, or you can do it step by step. So let's do it step by step. First, surface mesh. So you select there, click here, and there you go. You have your mesh, okay? So if you are not happy with this, just shame parameters or you can go and add local control. OK, so you can go here in geometry and select surfaces and so on to add more control just to show you here, enable geometry. And let's say that I want more control in this here and here in this two. OK, so right click set parameters and let's put there that I want 0 0.005. OK, and when you go back here, so it's taking longer time. You can see that this also is, and there you go. Okay, so you can apply that local control all around your geometry. Okay, so let me go back here. Let me close here. Okay, and probably it was too low what I chose. And let me go here. Zero one, okay, and let me go again, and this is it, okay. Um, after you have your surface, and let's say that we are happy with this, you can go to the next step. So see that you have also a smoothing and so on in our workflow, okay. And if I go back here, okay, remember that we start with it's pretty much similar surface then we can grow the boundary layer and then we can grow the tetra so in this case that i'm happy with this one i can grow the boundary layer okay but before growing the boundary layer you need to define the parameters here okay so let's say that i want to grow my boundary layer in the elbow wall okay so i enable that here use volume and i want to grow just three layers and also let's say that salt yeah it's the whole surface and the height is the first surface high the f uh, first cell high so let me go here zero 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 two okay aspect ratio then we're going to play a little bit how to control this one okay because there are many options how you can grow the boundary layer and so on okay so later we're going to see how to control that let's put five there and happy with those options i click here and it's going now to inflate the layer. So it's a pre-boundary layer method, okay? You generate the surface, and then you grow your boundary layer. So for OpenFun users, this will be the opposite, uh, uh, because OpenFun is post-boundary layer, okay? So after you have your volume mesh, you have, you grow your boundary layer. Here's before having the volume mesh. And when you do this one, the measure is also, while it grows the boundary layer, can change the surface mesh just to, to have, to enforce good quality meshes, okay? So let me go here, I can create the cut plane, and here we can explore the mesh.
okay so see that is a very nice mesh resolving everything okay with a few clips and then if you are not happy with this okay let me go 12 and just to remind you that it is like open phone you can save your intermediate steps okay so in this case i can click again here or probably i will need to redo the mesh let's go here and so i need to redo in this case my surface mesh but you can save the intermediate step okay and then you can reload so let me go here so let me go this one okay you have your surface mesh you can save it you can say test and then you have it there if you are not happy you grow your boundary layer here okay so now i put 10 layers put my cut plane and there you go so if you are not happy with this one just reload your surface mesh in this case it make no sense to reload to open because it's a fast one but some cases that surface mesh can be a big one okay so re redoing that with takes time so it's better to save it reload in the same way that you save intermediate steps in, in open phone so now that you have this and if you are happy with this your next step is here you go here and you do your tet mesh so now it's going to fill everything here with Tetra. So this might be your final mesh. Or if you want and you go the next step and you convert that Tetra, you convert it into polyhedron. Okay. So here is doing all the meshing. So everything is based in a Delaunay method. And let me go here, cut here, and there you go. So look at that also. Very I really enjoy this. <coughs> method because i really like this because it will align your tetra or pyramids with the axis okay so you have the auction so later we talk about some auction but basically that corresponds to these lattice auctions that it will try to align everything in the same way how you align the axis now in in snap okay and you are happy with this you can go here export and then you have the auction so see for those open phone users you have it there or I since the fluent or so on. And the next step, if you want to create the poly mesh, select there. And yes, and then here is starting from the tetra, it's going to convert this one. So usually this polyhedron R is a it's a dual mesh. You know? So it's doing what is called here a dualizer and it will generate the mesh. So let me go here. So there are many options here, message. So I can get a log file. That's what is happening here. So see that. We're converting the mesh, also it's running in parallel. Just to mention, automatically it will use the maximum number of cores that you have, but also you can limit those auctions if you want. Okay, so usually this dualizer can be a little bit time consuming. Large meshes, it will take a long time. So it's doing a lot of operations to get the best quality mesh. Okay, so let's wait a little bit here. Okay, at, the, at this point, the poly mesh is done. So see that we have a quite nice surface mesh, okay, resolving all the features. So just to mention that it took a little, a little bit long just because here you have all these small polyhedron, so it takes some time, probably exaggerated a little bit. And then let me put my cut plane here, and there you go. You have that nice poly mesh and see that mesh talking about that feature that it tries to align everything with the flow, creating that nice lattice structure. So if you want to disable that, just go here, you have your options, disable that and let's do it. So let me grow only the surface and I'm going to do only the tetra, okay? So the tetra, you're going to see that now it's not anymore aligned, okay? Okay, so let me stop it here. So 
important that in this case it was doing everything here so i just want to do the surface okay i have my surface mesh and now let me go and do the tetra so i don't want to convert poly deselect that yes and it's going to do the tetra tetra is usually as a quite fast operation There you go. So we have the mesh and let me put the cut plane here and this is it. So see, recall the previous one, it was kind of a line. So now it's more anisotropic. Okay. So it's up to you. I prefer the other option. You can also change your axis uh, and you can align with different axes. So pretty much this is the workflow, how we work in Innova. Okay. And if you want to set up your case in OpenFund, you have the mesh there and then um, you're going to play with these actions. Also, you need to link and over with your open phone installation. So this is all for this video. I hope I gave, we gave you a brief introduction. Okay, you have an idea what is happening, how things work, but we're going to work with many more cases just to introduce you to this fantastic tool. So thank you for your attention and see you in the next videos. Bye.